My name is Olin and this is James, my self-made uh, camper cabin built on a Unimog uh, 417. And I'm very happy to show you now the inside of it. I would like to start off with the um, entry door, at least now from the inside. As you can see, it's kind of the same system as it is on an airplane. So you close it this way and the staircase becomes a door. So what we have here is the, um, the energy controller. There is like solar panels on the roof, uh, two pieces. There is a lithium battery here underneath the bed. There is, of course, as you can see, different lights around. And um, then also there is like three types of chargers. So one charges the battery from the engine of the car via the alternator. The other one is like a plug-in thing for the 230 volt normal system. And then of course, as I mentioned, the solar panels. They know the size of solar panels and the battery? The battery has 165 ampere hours. And the solar panels, long time ago, since I installed them, I think it was like 200 or something, can that be watts? Then what we have here is like the, the kitchen. The kitchen is uh, consists of a standard uh, water tap and um, two gas burners. So there is a gas system built in also in this uh, kitchen module. We have uh, a little bit of fresh water tank, like 50 liters or something, and the same, and I slightly less for, for waste water. As a matter of fact, since we mostly go on holidays in uh, summer, we haven't used this stove on the inside very often because it's usually much nicer to go outside. Then what we have here is like the storage compartments. So this goes with um, curtains. Um, my father used to have a yacht and I've taken quite a few ideas from the yacht construction and this was one of them to have these kind of round openings here with curtains which actually make um, make everything very secure we've never ever had anything falling out so there is two of them there is a little space here for like the cutting board and stuff we we put underneath there then the kitchen itself consists of a couple of drawers for our storage and maybe you did hear that sound. This is um, done with a magnet and there is no um, kind of click lock or anything, but the magnet actually serves the purpose very well. Then we have a fridge built in here, nothing fancy. Also pretty empty at the moment because I just came back from a trip. And then two cupboards here with our um, cutlery and also the food and the food for the dog. Magnets are somewhere behind. The magnet is at the back of the of the drawer, yes. Mm -hmm. There is like a little metal um, angle and then there is a magnet behind that works really well. Yeah. And then the whole thing has a depth of like, I don't know, let's say 50 centimeters or something. And behind that there is the wastewater and freshwater tank as well as the gas bottle. So there's actually quite a lot of space. And if you come around here, then you can see here, there is this storage compartment here. One is here, one is above. This one here we use for like, when we go shopping, like little tiny things put in there or like the um, umbrella uh, for summer and so on, because it's quite deep. The whole cabin, by the, by the way, has a, a width inside of a slightly above two meters. I built that thing for myself and I'm 190 so I kind of thought when I build my cabin I want to have a bed where I can lay without any um, any kind of bending my knees or anything and maybe what's also very interesting is the pop-up roof um, and especially because it actually goes up on both ends it's just not like this kind of easy that would have been very easy to do it this way but it goes up like this so with this situation here now, we have a, um, a height of, of more than two meters here. It's almost like two meters 10. So it's very, um, very good to, to stand. And here, yeah, we have the opening, which also has a mosquito net, of course, for at night. Um, the whole thing has been self-made, I mean, constructed, like engineered. And uh, I can open that by hand but that takes forever. So I usually use a, a machine to uh, let it go up and down. Then you have the, the gas 
cylinders here which kind of counterweight the roof so it doesn't uh, it um, goes up more or less easy and down as well. How did you calculate the strength? From strong gas you need? The, just... whole, the whole cabin has been planned in uh, Adobe Fusion 360. And uh, we have, I'm an engineer by, by myself. I studied engineering like uh, quite many years ago. So we've done the whole engineering and, and calculation. Of course, like for such kind of things, there is also some helping uh, tools on the internet where you can kind of put in the weight and so on and the angle. But we actually did the whole thing in the program and calculated everything. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't say that actually it worked straight away from the beginning. This is the kind of the third version of this pop-up roof. The first one was like not stable enough in high winds and uh, when the, the cabin was tilted and so on. So we had to replace uh, some pieces with uh, stronger, actually more on the outside, inside is still the same, uh, stronger construction. And then the, um, the second version there was some, um, the, the roof was still too heavy, so we, we made the roof a bit lighter. We put in bigger uh, things like these ones shocks, here in yeah. a different angle, exactly shocks. And now it works quite well. Yeah, you can put that up within less than a minute. I think it goes up like 30, 30, 45 seconds. So this one here, this box here is the toilet. However, there's no toilet inside um, as a law Thing in Switzerland if you build a camper van there is a few things which a camper van must have to be allowed to be a camper van one of them is a kitchen it needs to be in the camper van there must be a toilet and there must be a height of at least one meter sixty if I remember correctly so we built or I built that box here for the toilet but we never actually did put the toilet in and everything in here actually has at least two purposes whatever was built so for example this box here obviously you can sit on it um, and use it as a chair to be on this side of the of the table, but also in at night actually it um, it extends the bed. We will show you this afterwards. But there is this lid which then hooks in and makes the bed bigger. Underneath um, there is the storage. Um, it's actually quite a big space. You won't see it from here, but I have all my tools here. The car, the Unimog is like more than 30 years old, so there's always better to have some tools along, even though we've never had anything. Uh, and then in this area here is the whole electronic um, compartment with the different chargers, the battery, as I mentioned, and everything. So I can talk a bit about the building materials, what I've used in here. The whole thing was a research, an R&D project and uh, we wanted to build the whole thing without any screws so the whole cabin has no screws it's all glued together to show how strong glue these days is modern glue together with wooden panels so these are um, plywood panels uh, made out of a birch tree and they are only like three millimeters thick so very thin and um, in between there is 40 millimeters of uh, mostly wood fiber insulation we used wood fiber insulation because it gives a much better climate. So we have never had uh, at any time in winter or summers uh, anyway, like condensation or anything. It doesn't uh, happen because the wood fiber insulation really picks up a lot of, of moisture and gives it uh, away later on as well as the timber itself and uh, very good insulation. Interesting story about the windows. They are 700 mil in diameter. 70 centimeters um, round as, as you can see this is not a off the off the line product so what we really want to do have it this size there is smaller ones which can be bought so they are specially made by a yacht window producer and because the wall is 40 millimeters thick which is thicker than like in a yacht case most yachts Actually, this is the product which they use from the, from the style for their yachts, which go to the Antarctic, which are heavily insulated. So this is like triple glass window. The frame itself of the cabin is, um, is bent timber. It's like the, you, you steam the timber, um, heat it up to 100, well above 100 degrees. Then you bend it, you leave it in the form and then you, you let go and then it stays as it is. So there is four um, rounds going around like one on each side and one in the center uh, of course cut out in the middle where the, where the roof is 
and then yeah there is the planking outside which is this uh, three millimeter thick uh, airplane plywood and on the inside again the same system so because the whole cabin is made out of such thin materials and um, lightweight uh, as i said everything is calculated in the program so there is like this bed here is not just built in once the cabin was finished this cabin actually helps the structure to stand as it is the same for the kitchen the same for the cupboards everything has some structural means in here so that the whole thing um, can be done this way as it, it is done but we also have of course like a few hooks uh, everywhere a bit you know so uh, towels can be hung um, uh, to dry or whatever how thick uh, material did you use for a bed and kitchen it's a bit thicker the, the bed is also the thin one the bed is six millimeters so it's a bit thicker yes it's like the same as this box here and the kitchen is also a bit more it's like uh, 10 or 12 millimeters it's a bit thicker yeah. and the whole thing has been uh, cut out on a CNC machine so all these pieces then I, I, I drawn them up in the program and then they went onto a CNC machine and were cut like to the more accurate than a, than a millimeter like a tenth of a millimeter and then kind of you know put together glued together and that's it yeah. so the from inside is a three millimeter plywood then it's mm. isolation and then again three millimeter plywood. yes on the outside though it's double layer because we wanted to prevent that any water comes in so since the boards do not come on the full size of the of the cabin i had to to do different boards uh, different sections and so they are always overlaying at some place so that uh, gives additional security and speaking about the outside however we can later on look at it it's like a impregnated plywood same plywood as in the inside and this was one of the three research projects we had this has never been done before so this cabin as it is here now made out of timber in this kind of configuration is the first in the world done this way and with this type of isolation, how, how many degrees is the difference between outside and inside? Makes a massive difference because wood fiber insulation has a big um, heat capacity. And uh, so, like, for example, when we go in summer, like last summer we went to Italy, it was very hot, you know, and then actually it stays very cool in here. Of course, as long as you keep the door closed, as soon as you open this one, it's over. But the, also, um, I've been not living in here but working in here here in the mountains where i come from at minus 12 degrees outside and i was in here working of course i was moving not sleeping but it actually with myself inside with the, the power tools with the light i had it was was warm enough not to not to wear a jacket already so minus 12 degrees probably uh, 15 degrees on the inside without any heating nothing and the total weight, do you know how much? The total weight is um, including everything in here, like battery, um, cautions, you name it, the gas bottle and so on, it's about 700 kilos. Here we go coming out of an aircraft in style. <laughs> so one big question we had when we kind of designed that thing, and I would like to talk also about my partners, which were involved in that whole thing, was like how to do the door, because you know, on the side, it kind of looks strange and so on. And then at some stage, we came up with the idea to do it like this aircraft style, you know, like also the small airplanes, they have this kind of door coming down, which then becomes the staircase. So. This thing here has about 27 kilos or so, this whole construction, because it needs to be very stable, because yeah, it should uh, kind of be possible, you know, that also heavier people can walk up and down. So it's 27 kilos, that's why I put this one here. This is a, a metal string, which has a, a, a spring up there, which pulls up with uh, some 25 kilos or so. So then here I have like two kilos, which I, have to put up and down and then it just goes like this have this kind of closing here same on this side it's with the key and that's it and the reason why this is made out of metal well one of, of it is like it looks kind of neat you know kind of gives this kind of one third one third one third of this back thing 
but also we did think if there is condensation and this is the same in cars and lorries and so on they, there is always a place where it can condensate not like condensates everywhere and we thought okay if it does condensate it condensates on this door on this actually two strips here which are not insulated and there is a little uh, hole here which then the condensation will drop out however we have never ever had any condensation so that uh, was a good it's a good idea but since it never happened because it's made out of timber no problem at all so these ones here are like um, closing systems for garage doors we just modified them a bit and made this this thing longer so they go beside the staircase um, the staircase has a certain angle which is kind of uh, the angle which it shall have for a staircase and so it, what you don't probably see is like that every single piece is actually different because the angle of the door itself is different than the walking angle so that the whole thing works uh, speaking about the partners um, so this was an r d project right it was partially funded by the feon by the federal office of environment from the swiss government and we pulled together like a, a crew of, of uh, companies and also institutes so ETH was involved, the Berner Fachhochschule, the, the University of Applied Science in Bern was involved with the glue testing. And there was like uh, different companies involved too. So one was um, uh, a company which impregnates timber. And this is the first time ever that um, plywood, this thin, like only three millimeters and six millimeters thick was impregnated. And it is quite difficult because usually when it comes out of the machine, it's kind of a propeller and you need to have it flat, especially on the side. So this was one part of the research project. So like exposed timber, impregnated, lasts forever, same style as they do like the, the telephone mast. This is now the fourth season, still looks like on the first day, doesn't, um, doesn't need any maintenance. It, it doesn't have to be painted or, or, or um, sanded or whatever, it's just like should last for the next uh, 30 to 40 years. Another company which was involved is like a, a company which bends timber, Winkler. So you can see here these pieces of timber here being bent. This is the frame which I explained before. There is like four of them going around. This is the only place which the, this uh, ash is still exposed. So this goes yeah, as bent around. Then another company involved was Coratec. This is where the sandwich panels were made on the sides. And the sandwich panels, um, they do come again with the same, uh, apparently, as you can see from the outside, the impregnated timber, but in between there is then a, a core material of insulation, which glues directly to the two layers. This was of course only possible in the, on the straight panels and not on the bend one. So that's why we have here the wood fiber insulations in it. And then from the institute's part, a very big part was done by the ZHAW, by the Applied University of Zurich. And there the design was done by Salome Berger, one of the industrial designers there. And together with her um, colleague, uh, Gabriel, we came up with uh, quite many of these kind of detailing ideas. Then the whole thing was cut and done on CNC machines um, at the at the, at the school here in, in the Graubünden region, IBW, that's the name. So this hole here uh, is for the gas, you know, in Switzerland and I think most European countries, the requirement is if you do have gas bottles inside or a gas stove or whatever, you need to have an opening where if gas leaks, you know, goes out. And of course it should be at the bottom because gas is heavier than air, so it, it comes out. And then we have here the frame. Um, I mean, this is again, this is the solid uh, wooden plate. LVL and then we have a, a little frame fixed to it but the frame is just like to fix the the, the fastening uh, fastening system and uh, so the whole thing actually is on the Unimox uh, original support and I can convert that and put the um, the skip on within 45 minutes so I can use this Unimox as going into the forest to pick up timber uh, refurbishing my house um, bringing plants uh, from the gardening center and you name it but also in holiday season to go on holidays with so the car is a unimog uh, 417 um, built 1990 so it's now going to be 32 years old this year um, it 
I refurbished the whole thing. It has been um, painted and so on, so it looks almost like new. And so that's also why last year it got uh, registration as an as a old timer or veteran, as we say here in, in Switzerland. It has a rather, for the time, rather en a modern engine, the so-called OM365. And it, this engine is a six liter straight diesel engine and it produces uh, 110 horsepower only. However, it has a lot of torque. It has uh, a lot of gears. So there is basically no way you got stuck. It brings you everywhere, you know, like uh, four by four, of course, all the locking systems and so on. It's a, for a Unimog, a normal wheelbase, the, the standard wheelbase, not the long wheelbase, which is of course very short. Um, and this also gives it like an extreme uh, maneuverability. Um, the, the turning angle is like, um, eight meters or something, which is less than, than most uh, cars. The whole car is original. I did not modify the car as in like bigger petrol tanks or diesel tanks and all that, which many people do when they want to kind of explore Africa. In my case, this was just not possible because as soon as you change things in Switzerland away from the original, then uh, you won't get the, the old timer status or this veteran status. So everything is is stock here, uh, petrol or, or diesel tank and uh, the, the speed and so on. It goes 90 k's per hour. Usually we travel around 75, 80 kilometers per hour max. Um, most people would probably also want to know how much petrol or diesel it needs. That's about 15 liters on 100 k's, which is fair enough. Most people will probably also think it needs more, but the, the reason being this OM366 engine, which they build in, um, goes quite on, on low uh, rotations per minute. And another interesting thing about this Unimog, only 28 have been built of that, of this model here. So it's a very rare uh, Unimog and uh, quite difficult to get hold on one of those. I thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you want to see more about it, there is a website www.xe417.com. XE stands for Expedition Edition and 417 is the number of the Unimog model. And there is also an Instagram account which you can find. And if you do have any questions about if you want to build your own in the same style and so on, please get in contact with me. It's part of my job as being an innovation manager to help uh, people and folks like you with that and that even comes for free. So get in contact with me, look at the Instagram pictures, go on the website and uh, enjoy traveling.